This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So we're going to go through and complete this chapter by looking at the valuation of debts. Now, this shouldn't really be anything new to you because you've covered the valuation of debt way back when you were going through there at your operational level and working through F1, okay, uh, whereby you had to go through and calculate the value of debt. So, so why all of a sudden is it rearing its ugly head again? Well, we've gone through and tried to value equity. Uh, and when you're valuing equity, uh, you could go through and take the free cash flows and discount them back by the weighted average cost of capital. That gives you the value of the business. And from the value of the business, you need to deduct the value of debt to get the value of equity. Okay, so I think it might be going just a little bit too far to get you to do a full blown equity valuation question uh, that involved debt valuation, but there might be a small element of debt valuation appearing somewhere within one of the questions. So it's worthwhile just going through that and repeating effectively what we've done already, isn't it? Okay. Now, remember, when we're going through there and valuing your debt, it's nice and straightforward in terms of the theory. Uh, the market value is the present value of future expected receipts discounted at the investor's required rate of return. OK, uh, so remember those future expected receipts uh, will be. The annual interest, so remember, uh, the annual interest on the bond is based upon the coupon rate, isn't it? And to work it out, uh, we apply the coupon rate to the par value. And the par value, remember, of your debt is $100, okay? Your $100 nominal block of 100 debentures or loan stock. Uh, don't forget as well, if you have some funky redeemable debts you also have the uh, within your future receipts you look at the redemption cash flow as well okay to be able to go through there and work out the market value when you're doing the discounting that's there at the investors required rate of return so effectively that is kd the cost of debt, but just be careful as we're looking at the market value for the debt holders, we're looking at everything pre tax. Okay, there we go. Okay, uh, excellent. So, uh, let's go through that and have a play around with the various bits and pieces. Okay, uh, so the first one is looking there at your irredeemable debt. So when you're working out the value of your irredeemable debt, you have a perpetuity uh, from one to infinity, don't we? Okay. Uh, so to go through there and to work out the market value of your debt, uh, you need to just go through there and take the interest and multiply it by a perpetuity factor. A perpetuity factor from one to infinity, which is one divided by the discount rate, isn't it? So to work out your market value, here you have 10% irredeemable debentures. So therefore, that is your coupon rate of interest is 10% of your 100. So that's 10. And then you multiply that by 1 over the discount rate. And here it is there. As 8% isn't it so 0 0.0810 divided by 0 0.08 uh, that goes through there and gives you $125 uh, per block of 100 okay so per $100 nominal volume okay uh, so if that's the case then it is $1.25 per bond isn't it okay or one dollar twenty five per dollar okay so if we're trying to work out the market value in total of the debt it's a one dollar twenty five whereby i've just taken 125 and divided it by the hundred to work it out per dollar uh, we have is it five hundred thousand dollars 
Uh, so there's that going through there and give me 600 and twenty-five thousand dollars. Just double check. Did that quickly in my head. It can be quite dangerous. Yeah, six hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. Excellent. There you have it. Okay with that. Excellent. What you should find uh, is then you should have example ten, uh, the second value of irredeemable debt. Have a go yourselves. Stop the video and restart it once you've got the answer. Okay. Good luck. Chris, if you can just go through, edit this bit out, uh, blah, 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 as I play around with my notes. There we go. Okay. Excellent. Right, you ready? After three. One, two, three. So, did you stop the video? Did you work the example? I hope you did. Uh, what did you get as the answer? I think the market value of the debt should be $500,000, okay. Uh, where do we get that from? Uh, well, the fact there that you have 6% uh, on your irredeemable debentures. So is that $6? The required return is 12%, so divided by... 0.12, 6 divided by 0.12 is there, is it as $50 per $100 block of 100 debentures. So that is the equivalent, isn't it? If you divide 50 by 100 as $0.50 per debenture. Okay, there are 1 million of them in issue. So if you take the 0 0.50, multiply by the 1 million, it gives you the 500,000. The market value is much lower compared to the par value. Why? Uh, well, if you want 12%, you're only getting 6%, and you've got to get that return from somewhere else, haven't you? The extra, if you like, above the current 6% of the debt is paying. If you want 12, you need more. Than just the six. So to get that, you're going to have to buy the bond very cheaply, and then on redemption uh, or into the future, uh, you will go through there and, and get more money uh, as maybe the rates change, and therefore you can sell uh, that bond for more money and then get your higher return in the future. Okay, there we go. Uh, if we then go through and follow it up, uh, is it there with your redeemable debt? Redeemable debt is ever so slightly more challenging, isn't it? Uh, because you have to go through there. You can't just use your, if you like, short form formula that we had there, taking the interest and dividing it by the required rate of return. You have to do it as a full present value calculation. Okay. Uh, so here, what have we got? It says work out the market value of debt. So no difference to what we've done before. Uh, but here we have four hundred thousand dollars, eight percent debentures. They are reduced redeemable in five years time okay so you can see there that we have redeemable debentures and we're only going to get the coupon interest of eight percent from t1 to five it's going to be redeemed at a premium of ten percent uh, so based on your par of a hundred ten percent above a hundred is 110 and then any discounting we're going to have to do is it there at 12 percent okay uh, so what have we got uh, so what i go through and do I look at my cash flows. Uh, I would then go through there and look at my discount factor. If you want, let's just throw in an extra column to make sure you're happy. Uh, you've got your time period, cash flows, discount factor, present value. You can do it in a much shorter hand version method, but I'll allow you to, to work that out as you go along. Let's do it and make sure we get it right first. Uh, so what we've got, time period T1 to 5, your cash flows, are uh, there is 8. Uh, the discount factor is based on a rate, is it there, of 12%. Okay, so you need an annuity factor for 5 years. I think that, and you can use your tables, I'll use my calculator, is that 3.60. Five. Okay, 
We then need to go through there, look at T5. At T5, we have a redemption premium of 10%, so is that 110? Uh, a discount factor at T5 is that the 0.567, okay? Uh, multiplying across, so taking your cash flow, multiplied by your discount factor. Uh, does that give me 28.84? And then is it 62.37? Uh, if I add those together, 28.84 plus 62.37, does that give me 91.21? Again, remember that is 91.21 per a block of $100, $100 debentures. Okay. Uh, if we therefore have, is it... 400,000 uh, to work out the market value. We'll take the 400,000, multiply it by, is it 0.9121? Does that go through there and give you, is it 364,840? Okay, there we go. Again, the questions will either ask you to work out based upon a block of 100 or to work out in total. The key bit is whichever way you, you, you're having to do it, whether it's per block of 100 or in total, just stick with the cash flows based upon your block of 100. It makes the computations much, 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 much more straightforward. Okay, excellent. Uh, you've got another example. Is it there? Example number 12, the value of redeemable debt number two. Like we said before, uh, the only way to get good at these questions is to practice them. Okay, so here, have a go and practice working out the market value of this particular redeemable bond. Lay it out in exactly the same way as what we did on the previous example, like we saw there. So using that table. And if you can work that through, you'll be fine. So stop the video and then rejoin us again in a moment. Right. How did you go through and get on with that one? OK, I think the market value of the debt and we'll find out if I'm right in a moment, I think uh, was nine oh four nine hundred. OK, if you work and get out in total. OK, uh, where did we get that from? Well, again, time period. Cash flow, discount factor. Uh, present value uh, here. It's in four years time, isn't it? So be careful there. That was T1 to four. Redeemable in four. Uh, interest based on the coupon rate is seven. And it's going to be redeemed at par. So no premium. Just at par. Okay. Uh, so your discount factor based upon the investor's required rate of return at 10%. Uh, so a four-year annuity factor, I think, is 3.170. Uh, a four-year discount factor is 0.683. Multiplying across, does that give you 22.19? Does that give you 68.3? Which gives you 1890.49. Again, that's per block of 100. So divide it by 100 to give you 0.9049. And multiply by, was it here? There were a million dollars of debt in issue. Is there 904,900? Okay, there we go. Everybody happy with the value of debt? Yeah, brilliant. Might crop up here or there. And then the key bit is to go through there and focus on the value of equity, whereby within there, there might also be some value of debt calculation. So, like I've said many times before, keep practicing the questions in the study text, the revision kit. And the more you practice those, 
the easier the exam will be. Other than that, I'll see you all within the next chapter. Bye for now.